<clears throat> to our honourable chief guest, my dear friends, fellow colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. A very pleasant evening to each and every one of you. It is an honour for me and a privilege to be a part of this event. For letting me avail this opportunity, I would like to thank a much respected Mr. Daud Raza and his team. Also a man of many talents, who I'm fortunate enough to call my father, Sayyid Dabila. Can I sit here please? A person of commitment. Because I was sitting. And without these key individuals, such concerns and efforts could not have been made. We are gathered here today for this alarming event. Our nation demands our attention. They want us to strengthen them. They are seeking our support and want us to act as a team to resolve the current issues as we have always done in the past whenever the country has called us. Today, in the current scenario, what has happened that has called, that is demanding such a unity? Now please listen carefully of what we are at verge of. My audience, most of our people are unaware that the thirsty days are ahead of Pakistan as it is running out of water and alarming rain. In 2017, the Pakistan Council of Research in Water Resources announced that Pakistan would run out of water by 2025. Pakistan is currently facing an acute water shortage that is likely to wreak havoc in the country in the coming years. The Indus River System Authority told the Senate Forum of Pakistan that um, Pakistan dumps water worth approximately 21 billion US dollars into the sea each year, in each year. Yes, 21 billion US dollars. It means Pakistan is storing less water among the available surface flows due to the lack of water storage. On the other hand, climate change is also one of the root causes of water shortage in Pakistan, which has caused drought-like situations in rural and remote areas. People are dying and suffering from diseases which are erupting and many other adversities which are still present. Populated cities like Karachi lack sound water management and are already facing a Cape, like, Cape Town-like day zero situation. Now, most of you must be wondering what I mean by day zero. Day zero is when, if a particular low limit of water storage is reached, the water supply to the country or to the specific area would largely be shut off. In this scenario, making Cape Town the first major city in the world to uh, run out of water. Cape Town had increased its population and no water storage, just like Pakistan. This resulted in 37,000 people losing their jobs and 50,000 people being pushed below the poverty line due to job losses. Are we, looking, uh, are we looking at the same result here in Pakistan? Absolutely not. Now that, I've, um, now that you have all understood the importance of new dams, I would like to make some valuable points. The country needs three manual sized dams to conserve the amount of water that goes into the sea each year. The Indus River System members told the meeting that Pakistan can only store up to 30 days of water, while India can store up to 320 days worth of water. Pakistan only has 185 dams and only two large ones, whereas in contrast India has 5,000 dams and China has 84,000 dams, including 4,000 large ones. Although there, are, there have been many attempts to build dams in Pakistan, but they have been riddled with land conflict, political disagreements and other international disputes with our neighbouring countries. What a shame it would be if the world thinks a nuclear-powered country is unable to store water. It would be a shame. Now, when courage, genius and generosity hold hands, anything is possible. Now that our Prime Minister Imran Khan has announced his backing for the plan, this time a nation has chosen an honest leader and has placed their faith in him, who has hopes that whenever any overseas Pakistanis, the ones who helped him build the universities abroad, appealing to help him build these dams. Now, I would like to conclude on a high note. There are two ways of spreading light. To be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. Believe me, helping this cause is not only a charity, it is an investment, an investment for Pakistan's future. No person was ever honoured for what he received. Honour has been rewarded for what he gave. We have to respond to our esteemed Chief Justice of Pakistan and beloved Prime Minister's request, uh, plea with enthusiasm. Critics are saying there is no example 
in which such a huge amount was collected to build such a huge project. If this campaign is successful, it would be the world's largest crowdfunding effort in history. <clears throat> now, what would be more satisfying? The accomplishment of saving the nation's future and showing that Pakistanis are capable to create miracles when they are united. Now, I'm not saying that every Pakistani should play an integrative role in building these dams because it has become our duty to compose all efforts to make this dream come true. Do not think your donation is too low. Think of the purpose you are donating for. It may be just a drop in the ocean, but remember the ocean is nothing but a collection of drops. Today it is our time to show unity and brotherhood. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, was also stern about Muslims working together. In a beautiful hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he once recalled faithful believers are to each other as the bricks of a wall, supporting and reinforcing each other. Alhamdulillah, we have so much of the resources that we do not need to beg from other countries to build these dams and we alone can make this dream come true. Yes, Pakistan would become a better place for all citizens one day and that day is not very far. Trust in Allah, believe in yourself and have faith on our newly elected Prime Minister. May Allah keep us all united. Uh, God bless you all. Long live Pakistan.